let's see how to add custom block drops to Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be seeing how you can add custom loot tables. That is going to be drops from blocks, entities, stuff like that into Minecraft. Now, the thing is that this is actually fairly straightforward and shouldn't be too crazy. So once again, in our data folder, in the tutorial mode folder, we're going to right click new directory called loot underscore tables. Once again, very important that this is written correctly. Inside of there, we're going to make a new directory called blocks. And inside of there, we're now going to define the loot tables for our blocks. Now, how are we going to do this? Once again, we're going to go down to the external libraries all the way to this one right here. So you can see net Minecraft, Minecraft project map, and so on and so forth. Basically, when the, all of these, you know, the giant wall of text that all looks the same, right? Three above this, this is basically the one that you want to expand here. And then you want to expand the data folder. You want to expand the Minecraft folder. And all of a sudden, look at this, loot tables blocks we have all of the block loot tables available to us once again so if you have a certain behavior of what drops basically from a particular block and you want to emulate that copy this json file over to your own your own directory and you can use it outright so very easy so let's use the copper block and the copper ore in this example so i'm going to select both of them Control c to copy it and i'm then going to go up back to the loot tables box in my own one and i'm going to paste this in now we will have to change the names of those but that's not an issue so right click refactor rename and this is of course going to be the mithra block now what's very important is that here the name of the file actually has to match the name that we've given the blocks inside of the mod blocks class. So that's very important. Same with the copper ore here. So we're going to rename this to the mithril ore. And you can see this is how a loot table for, let's say, a normal block looks like. It's just going to drop itself. Now, of course, we need to change this, right? Because we don't want our mithril block to drop a copper block. We want it to drop a tutorial mod colon mithril underscore block. There you go. And now it is going to drop exactly one of our blocks. That's exactly how it is. So that's pretty cool already. Now let's take a look at the ore. If you think about the ore, that's a little more complicated, right? Because it should drop the ore block if you have silk touch enchantment and it should drop in the raw variant if you don't have it. So you can see this is all of a sudden a bit more and much longer. However, it still is not going to be too crazy. So of course, to understand the entirety of the loot tables, that's going to take a little while. And I will show you at the end of this video, two great resources that you can use to basically understand them a little bit more. But the general idea is just that we just have to change the copper ore here and the raw copper to basically our what we want to drop. So tutorial mod colon mithril underscore ore. And then the same thing goes here. Instead of Minecraft raw copper, it's going to be tutorial mod colon raw underscore mithril. And that is pretty much it. Now it's going to function exactly the same as the, well, other ore blocks would as well. And by the way, the same goes for the deep slate or the netherrack ore. If you want this to function exactly the same as this ore, you just duplicate it, change the name, change what drops in here, and that's it. So that's always going to be the th the thing usually a lot of the json files are going to be copied over because they are very similar anyway if you have something truly unique where you want something that that's like okay it only drops in on night when you are using this particular thing in this particular biome okay then i still have a great resource at the end of the video that is going to definitely help you but for the time being this is basically it now what's very important is that if we were now just using this it would actually not work and now you might say wait it wouldn't work now well, not quite, because we actually have to define some tags as well. Because when we go into the blocks, you can see we've defined a strength. So this is the time it takes to break this block. And we've said, hey, this requires a certain tool, but we've not said what tool it requires. This is now done via tags. So in the data folder, we're going to right click new directory called Minecraft. It's a game. You might have heard of it before. Anyway, inside of there, we're going to make a new directory called tags. And then inside of this tags directory, we're going to make a new directory called blocks. And then once more inside of there, right click new directory called mineable. Now, this mineable directory is very strange. What are we doing here? Well, let's once again go to the external libraries. Let's collapse all of this. And we can take a look at the tags right here. And then we can open the blocks folder. And then there we have the mineable. 
and we have those four JSON files here. I'm just going to copy them over. So I'm going to select all of them, and press Control C and then Control V to paste them in. And you can see that this has a list of a bunch of stuff. Now, if you can take a look at the axe JSON, right, you can see that, you know, bamboo, okay, beehives. This is all of the things that the axe can properly harvest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of everything in here. And I'm going to do the same for the hole, right? Because nope, we don't want anything here. And I'm, I'm going to do the shovel the same way. I'm going to get rid of everything here. And then I'm going to go to the pickaxe. And the pickaxe, you can see all of the stuff that we can use a pickaxe on or that a pickaxe that is used for. We can just get rid of all of this as well. And now we're going to add our own blocks in here. So we don't have anything currently for the hole, the axe or the shovel. We only have stuff for the pickaxe. So I'm basically just going to add this. So this is going to be tutorial mod colon mithril underscore block and then i'm just going to copy this over this also works for the mithril ore so obviously you would want to do this for all of your different blocks here basically right so i'm just going to do the same thing so this is going to be for the deep slate ore and for the netherrack ore as well and then this is going to be for the raw underscore mithril block here at the end and then you have all of your blocks in here now we have defined what type of tool you need, but now the question is what level of tool do you need? You need, does wood work? Does stone tools work? Iron or diamond tools? Maybe even netherite? Who knows? Well, we can define whether or not it needs stone, iron or diamond tools once again in the external libraries down here. In the blocks folder right now, what we can do is we can just search when we have actually expanded this for needs. So you can see needs stone tool, needs iron tool, needs diamond tool. So once again, I'm going to select all of them, press Control C to copy them, and I'm going to put them into the blocks folder right here. And then what we're just going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of this here, and I'm going to get rid of all of this here, and I'm also going to get rid of all of this right here. And then I'm going to say, you know, I actually think that the mithril needs iron tools to be mined, so I will actually take all of the contents from here, and I'm going to put them right here. This is basically what I want to do. So I want all of those blocks to be only mineable with a pickaxe that is at least level iron. So that's pretty much all that we're doing here. So this is incredibly important. If you don't add this, then it's not going to work. And yes, you will have to add all of your blocks in here. You have to add all of your blocks in the specific JSON files, you have to add all of your blocks in the, well, either the mineables and then also in the tiers as well, so that the game knows what type of tool and what tool level is needed to break your block properly. Now, please also note that the mineables only works if you have the requires tool set on your block. This is incredibly important as well. Right, and now we are finally ready to see whether or not the loot tables have been successfully added. So let's see if it works. Alright, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. So first of all, make sure that you're in survival mode because I actually have seen someone, you know, not be in survival mode for this. And let's see. So you can see the stone pickaxe takes an awful long time to mine this. So it's pretty obvious that it doesn't work. And then the iron pickaxe works. And there you go. We have four mithril dropped. And here we're going to have our mithril block drop. So exactly how we want it to. And now you can basically add a loot tables for all of the blocks that you've added and then everything here should work. Right, so that is actually how easy it can be. The most maybe confusing thing is definitely gonna be the tags, but don't worry about it. We're gonna talk in a later tutorial about the tags in a little bit more detail for the time being. Just know that this is basically a list, you know, of blocks that are used to identify with what tool they are properly mined. So that's the, the general idea here. Otherwise, it should be fine. So two great resources that I can recommend is number one, the loot table article on the Minecraft fandom wiki right here, where basically all of the tags for the JSON file are explained in quite good detail. So I highly recommend taking a look at this. And if you just wanted to generate your loot tables, then you can take a look at Missoud GitHub IO loot table right here. So loot table generator, just make sure that you are set to 118. That's very important because sometimes between versions, some things change. And inside of here, you can basically change all of the stuff that you want. You can, I mean, just play around with this. Highly recommend. You can, for example, see that you can add some conditions and you can see that there are a bunch of conditions. For example, you can, you know, time check. There's a weather check survival explosion there's some random chances matching tools stuff like that so there's plenty of stuff that you can do and change in here and add basically for making a custom loot table right, and that is pretty much it for this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did i would very much appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah 